and practice problems on the vinegar agent. And so, again, it's just a matter of remembering whenever you see a carbon-carbon double bond, you could go backwards and say, well, going backwards, that was a carbon-oxygen double bond and I used the vinegar agent. So, in the ben in the uh, diels alder synthesis, we saw this quite a number of times and we had to do an elimination reaction with OH- to put a bromine on, turn that bromine into OH with PBr3 or HBr, and then cut with the OH with the, the alkyl lithium reaction. Now I'm going to show you there's actually a one-step way of doing this way faster. If this is all I have to work with, well, what all I have to do is use the Wittig reaction. And I could do PPH3, and I look, well, here is my double bond. I want to go backwards, so going backwards usually it's like this, because all I'm doing is replacing the O with whatever carbon is attached to this phosphorus by a double bond. If these, both of these double bonds are on the end with CH2, well then I just want this to be double bond CH2. And what that will mean is the starting reactant would look like this. All I'm doing going forward is replacing each of those O's with CH2. The double bond is still there, but that's a CH2, that's a CH2. And so this is a one-step way of doing the three-step thing we were doing in the previous videos. Um, and now it's only one, two, three carbons instead of five, so it would, be, it would be four carbons or less. For number two, it's kind of the same idea. I see I have a double bond here. So what you can do is you can say, all right, one of these, one of the ends of this double bond must have been double bonded to, the, to phosphorus before I did the vitid. The other end must have been double bonded to an oxygen. So if I do that, what I can do is I can redraw the two pieces, or I can redraw the same thing first, so I have a one, two, three, double bond. I have that. I'm going to erase this double bond. And this will be double bonded to one thing. Let's say that's the oxygen. And this should be double bonded to the PPH3. And now this will work, right? Because I have one, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four carbons. And all I'm doing going forward is I'm having whatever was double bonded to the phosphorus connect to whatever, the uh, replacing what the oxygen was. So I'm just erasing all of that, erasing the oxygen, and then these will be connected by the double bond. And notice, this only works if this is a Z double bond, and it is in this example, but if I had the chain going down like that, I wouldn't be able to do this. But this is just a nifty little way of cutting carbon chains down the center if you have carbon-carbon double bonds there. This one I don't know if you're going to see too readily, but this is a handy one for any deals all their synthesis where you're using this. This one though is very real realistic in what you could be expected to know, and well, at least the first part of it is. So for number three, the first thing that should stand out to you is you have a six-member ring. So you read in your thread as soon as you see that, you should think deals alder. I made that six-member ring with deals alder. Even stronger, to help emphasize that idea, you see a carbon-carbon double bond within that ring, which, well, we know deals all their products always involve a, a six-member ring with a carbon-carbon double bond. But what's that third thing that you always need? A good withdrawing group on your dienophile. Now, if we go about numbering this the way I've shown you before, where the, the double bond in the ring is typically between two and three, and then we have one and four by extension, then five and six must be these two carbons. Five and six, of course, being your dienophile's carbons. And now it's single bonded to a carbon-carbon double bond. Well, carbon-carbon double bond isn't a withdrawing group. But wait, there's something that can become a carbon-carbon double bond that is a good withdrawing group. So here's the other situation where you're very likely to have to use the Wittig reagent. You need to turn this carbon-carbon double bond into a C double bond O, and you can use, do that by doing PPH3 double bond CH2. Because right here is a CH2, and I just want that CH2 to be a double bond O. So I'm going to erase the CH2 going backwards and replace it with an oxygen. So everything else is the same, but now I have a double bond O. And if I was going forward, it's the oxygen that gets replaced by the CH2. And then I just have the rest that's sticking out here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now I need to split this apart like any other deals alder. So I'm gonna do heat over the arrow and I have to figure out the bonds that were formed. So let's number this again. One, two, and three between the double bond, four, five, and six being my dienophile. Five and six being my dienophile, rather. 
We know that the bond that we formed is between 4 and 5, 1 and 6. So when I draw these out, I'm going to erase that bond between 4 and 5 and 1 and 6. 6 has its double bond O on it, and 4 has this, point, uh, this long carbon chain. Now I just need to put the double bonds in the right spot. There should be a double bond between 5 and 6, a double bond between 1 and 2, and a double bond between four, uh, 3 and 4. Okay? So this piece right here is 4 carbons or less. I'm done with it. I don't care about it anymore. But this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons long. Now, if you feel more comfortable going about this the rest of the way like we did for the first question, or for the, uh, for the deals all their base synthesis where you had to do the elimination and the OH cutting mechanism, that's fine. But there's a shortcut here using the bidding. Again, if I were to say, okay, well, I need to cut some carbons off, and I have one, two, three, four over here, I have five, six, seven over here, I could cut this double bond over here using the Wittig reaction. Actually, no, I couldn't because it's not, uh, not a Z double bond now that I look at it. But I was trying to make it work that way. Uh, So I guess you can't use the Vidic here, but it was an idea worth mentioning. It was an idea. Okay, so if we can't do the Vidic, then it's just doing what we were doing before. So I need to form a carbon-carbon double bond, and the only way to do that, if I can't do the Vidic, is using an elimination reaction. So OH minus, and that's going to do the elimination, putting a bromine back on one of the carbons involved with the double bond. Now you have the option of using one and two or three and four, but because three and four is in the middle, that's probably the better spot, because now you can cut in the middle. So OH minus will put a bromine. I'm gonna to choose to put that bromine on carbon three. But if you put it on carbon four, you'd still end up getting the same thing. So we have the bromine right there. Actually, do I wanna put it on three? Because then I cut one, two, three. Actually, that's, it's fine either way, because you'll get four carbons or less on either side, no matter where you put it when you cut. So now I have four, five, four, five, six, and seven. Now I need to turn that bromine into something I can cut with, so I'm going to use uh, PBr3. It's not a tertiary carbon, so this is fine. And now I have double bond, <clears throat> double bond OH, one, two, three, four. So once again, now we have our OH, we're good to cut. We want to cut on the side that gives us four carbons or less, if possible. And so if I cut here, that wouldn't work. But if I cut here, I'd have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So my A and B would best be these two. A being the carbon the OH is attached to, and B being the carbon that is a single bond away from that. And I'm going to cut that bond, so going backwards, over my arrow, I'll have step two, H plus. I'm going to redraw everything exactly the same. Here's an OH. Here's my carbon chain. And we said we're breaking the bond between A and B, so I erase that. The carbon that has the OH becomes a double bond O. You erase the hydrogen, draw in the double bond. And the carbon that got cut off, carbon B, you now draw a new bond to a lithium. And so these two pieces are one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. Four carbons or less, so this is done. So most commonly, or very commonly in, a, in, a, in synthesis problems we'll see on old exams, you start with just carbon-carbon double bonds where it's uh, the whole ring, but now it's just a CH2 up here. And we know how to do deals all there. We need a withdrawing group, a double bond O. And the fastest way to get that there, and the easiest way, and the intended way that they want you to do it, is with the Wittig, or the Wittig, or whatever you want to pronounce it. German pronunciation doesn't really matter in this course. <laughs>